Hey, how about you check out these guts? So what we're doing here is we're taking a look at the innards of this MFJ manual tuner. You can see the controls right there. During the course of this video, we're going to talk a little bit about this interface. We're going to talk about this design, and we're going to see how well this works when connected to an antenna or a load. So if that's something that's of interest to you, why don't you hang out and watch the show? Head on over to PCBWay.com for all of your prototyping needs. Whatever you need, PCBWay has got you covered. The folks at PCBWay are experts in PCB manufacturing and assembly. Let them help you with your next project. At PCBWay, there's no minimum requirement, fair pricing, and free DFM services. You'll get on-time shipping, an easy return and refund policy, and 24-hour customer service. So I was talking to the folks at MFJ uh, about a need that I have for a manual antenna tuner. Um, I guess it doesn't need to be manual, but I wanted a manual antenna tuner for simplicity's sake. Uh, I picked up a radio recently that does not have a built-in tuner, and I wanted a way that I could tune my antenna um, while I was out in the field or operating portable. Uh, sometimes I like to sit out back and connect this radio up to my antenna, and uh, in some cases I need a tuner uh, in order to enjoy myself. So I reached out to the folks at MFJ, and they did send this to me free of charge in exchange for this uh, video review. So I just want to say a big thank you to MFJ for sending that, and I wanted to just let everybody know that um, this was sent to the channel for review purposes. Okay, so here's the tuner, and you really can't see much from this view now, can you? Uh, what I wanted to mention again is, is that it is a very simple design. It is an older design, um, and it's, you know, tried and true. Uh, many, many antenna tuners work this way. It uh, is what you call a T-network. Uh, and what you have is, is you have two variable capacitors kind of sandwiching in a, uh, a, an inductor. Sometimes you'll see uh, uh, rolling inductors or you'll see fixed uh, tapped inductors like this, which has 12 different tap points. We're going to take this apart and you're going to see exactly how that works. One of the things I wanted to mention, these knobs feel pretty good. I don't know what kind of material they are. They're probably like Bakelite or some kind of plastic or something like that. But um, they're very smooth to actuate and this would adjust your capacitance on the antenna side. Uh, you also have the ability to adjust capacitance on the transmitter side. And again, you have the same smooth uh, action on this knob. Now in the middle, we have the 12-step uh, inductance uh, coil, which is inside of here. And when you turn this, it's pretty stout. Um, what I've heard is, is that with tuners like this is that you don't want to be transmitting and, and turning this. Um, you want to make sure that uh, you're not creating any arcing or anything inside of your antenna tuner. So whenever you, you're tuning your antenna, it's best to do it uh, with a lower power setting. And when I say lower power setting, I'm talking sub 5 watts, um, even like somewhere around 2 watts or something along those lines is what, uh, what I would do. Um, anyhow, interface is very simple. It's it's uh, easy to use. This looks like it's made out of some sort of aluminum chassis, uh, metal chassis that uh, has just been bent or fabricated in the factory. Here we are taking a look at the back of the unit. And again, it's uh, relatively simple. Uh, you have the one side for your transmitter, one side for your coax, and that is how we're going to be using this. Um, my antenna is using a coax feeder. Uh, here's your ground lug. Now, it mentions the importance of grounding this to your um, to your radio. Now, what you should do, and I'm not giving grounding advice, I'm just talking about best practices, is you should round, ground your radio and this device to a common ground. Um, daisy chaining equipment together uh, is generally considered not a best practice, but I'll leave that to you to decide how you want to ground your equipment in your shack. Uh, here you have your balanced feeders, and they call these a five, pos five position connection. I've always called these banana plug or banana jack adapters. Um, you can unscrew these and then you can put like a, some people just wrap a wire around there. You can use a terminal connection, an eye ring, take this all the way off, put an eye ring or a fork on there, whatever, whatever you want. But for balance line, you'd have one to either side. Some people even put a banana jack at the end of their balance line and plug them in here. Uh, and same with a, with a long wire antenna. Now, what's important is that if you're using the balance feeder, you do need to connect a jumper wire, which is a simple thing to do, from here to your, um, your, your wire jack here, which helps get your balance line into the circuitry of the tuner. Um, if you're using a long wire, and we'll take a look at the instructions and see what they say about using a long wire, um, it's a little bit different. So we'll go ahead and we'll cover that. 
But this is really um, nice. It's lightweight, and it's, it's exactly what I was looking for uh, when I was talking to the guys at MFJ who are fantastic and super friendly um, about a manual tuner. I wanted one for portable operations, and this was the one that uh, – well, this is one of two that uh, I am trying out, and I'm really, really happy with it so far. So what I want to do now is I want to take a, take this thing open. I want to get it open, and we can take a look at the mechanics inside and see exactly how it works. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's take a quick look at the product page uh, that we have here for the MFJ901B antenna tuner. You can see it's good for 200 watts, and it works from 1.8 to 30 megahertz. It includes a ballon, so this is a pretty capable tuner. That um, I, I checked out some reviews on it uh, before it got here, and people were saying it would tune up anything. It's a fantastic antenna tuner. It is a older design um, that's tried, true, and tested. I was able to find reviews going all the way back to 1988, and I believe that uh, obviously that this, this design, this model is decades old and potentially older. Um, there is a product manual that you can download, and we have that here. And uh, what's interesting about this product manual is that it looks like it was printed and scanned in uh, on a dot matrix printer, so uh, that's kind of neat. But uh, here it is. It talks about the VersaTuner. It's designed to match virtually any transmitter up to 200 watts RF power output to almost any antenna. This includes dipoles, inverted Vs, random wires, verticals, mobile whips, beams, and others fed by coax lines or single wire from 160 through 10 meters. So one to four ballon is built in for balance lines. That's awesome. You get a lot of capability with that. This is kind of a no frills uh, antenna tuner. It doesn't have um, an SWR meter built into it, for example, or a power meter. It's just, uh, it's just all the connections and dials that you need. It's uh, very simple um, and there's an elegance in that simplicity. Here it talks a little bit about installation. We are going to follow part one, which is install your nine to one between your antenna and your SWR watt meter shown in figure one. And we'll take a look at that in a second. Now connect a coax line from the SO239 coax connector in the rear of the tuner received transmitter uh, to an SWR meter connected to a transceiver. And that way you can monitor your SWR. In today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this connected to a nano VNA because we'll be able to dynamically see a sweep and uh, see how it is impacted or affected as we make adjustments on the antenna tuner. Um, here it is, coax feed uh, antennas must be connected to the SO239 on the back marked coax. This is where it talks a little bit about balance feed line. And I wanted to make a note here. It says balance feed line must be connected to the jumper. Um, connected, I'm sorry, to the two five-way binding posts marked balance line. And you need to connect a jumper wire. And we'll take a look at where that is to make sure that everything works okay. Um, they also talk about random wire antennas that you can connect. It says the random wire antenna should be as long, high, and clear of surrounding uh, objects as possible. It also uh, makes a mention to uh, make sure that when you're using the random wire that your MFJ901B is well grounded to the transmitter. And here's some instructions on how to tune in, but uh, we're not going to go through that because we're going to see that in the product demonstration. And so here's figure one. You have your transmitter, coaxial line, SWR meter, your antenna tuner, and then your antenna. It's pretty simple, but you want this to be after your SWR meter because the tuner is part of your antenna system. Uh, switch the other way around, you might get some goofy measurements and things that you don't want. So the other thing I wanted to take a quick look at here is the circuit diagram. And uh, it's relatively simple, as we mentioned. This is what they call a T network or a T match network. Uh, when you take a look at it, the first thing you notice is that there's a 12 position uh, step uh, inductor. And that is the middle button. And we'll, we'll take a look at that, or middle, middle dial on the interface. Um, and it goes all the way from A to L, A being your lowest inductance, which is what you want to use for shorter antennas, and then K um, and L being your, your highest inductance, which is what you use on your longer antennas. You add inductance to virtually add length through a tuner. You can see uh, this would be the, the base of the T, and then along the top you have your two variable capacitors, C1 and C2, and it gives the values for those, which is pretty handy. Uh, it goes from 10 picofarads to 324, and that's important to know in case you need to get inside, do any repair work, maybe you want to swap these out. Um, that way you know what, what you're working with. And then here it shows your various connections for antenna coax, wire, um, they were a balanced, balanced line, and you can see the jumper depicted there. Um, you see the 4 to 1 ballon coming in off of your balance line. So typically you want to have it around the 200 to uh, 50 uh, impedance ratio, and you can see how it's grounded there. All right, well, let's take a better look at the product and see what's going on. 
Okay, and taking this apart, there are some screws at the bottom, but I don't want to mess with these because I believe that these hold certain components inside the tuner securely. So what I want to do is just take a look at it, and it looks like this, this top cover, which is bent over, is connected here with this Phillips screw and connected here with this Phillips screw. So that is going to be what we're going to take off here in order to take a gander inside of this tuner. All right, there we go. The construction of this unit uh, feels relatively solid. So the first thing I notice is a sticker in here that says AG. Now, I don't know if that is the inspector or if that is the person who assembled this. But uh, let's take a look at what we have. And uh, first, we'll take a look at these capacitors. So here is open, and then this would this would be meshed. Um, which So at one on the dial we are fully meshed and then this would be fully open um, let's take a look at this one and when I look at these the capacitors look good now one of the things that you want to make sure is is that these are not bent or touching each other or they're evenly spaced and that makes sure that everything works correctly and also you don't have any any arcing now taking a look at the the uh, 12 position switch and how it connects to this this is what we would call an induction coil and then you can see that the different settings off of the switch come to different places on this induction coil and by doing that you make this look electrically shorter or longer which uh, impacts the um, induction value of this inductor and allows you to tune in your antenna so you can see right here that we, ha we actually do have some of the coil windings are bent but I don't think that that is a that's a big deal and it looks like we have a bent one on that side as well. But um, you can see that these are two mount points, and those would be the screws on the bottom that I talked about earlier. Um, there's also a screw right here, so let's see what that is. And that is for this ballon. This would be a 4 to 1 ballon, and we'll see, see this depicted on the schematic. That is used for the balanced antenna line. So you can see it comes off of here and goes into this ballon. Um, and it also connects in here to this ground this ground lug. But uh, this looks pretty good. Everything's connected. All the solder joints look reasonable. Uh, they look better, <laughs> better than mine. So uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. There's not much to it. Um, and as I mentioned, this is a relatively basic design, but it works, and it works well. Um, and that's why it's been around for so long. So what I want to do now is I want to get this connected to our Nano VNA and to an antenna or to a load and then we'll be able to do some some adjustments and see how it works. So let's go ahead and get that done. Okay, so here we are with this connected. Don't worry, this is not the angle or view that we're going to use to do this. We're going to try to set up another camera so we can see the front of the tuner here. Uh, so as we make adjustments, you'll be able to see them change. Also, we're going to connect the Nano VNA up to the computer software, and that'll be a little bit easier to see as well. But I want to talk about how we're setting up our test scenario. Uh, we have the Nano VNA and have a whole playlist on Nano VNAs if you're interested in learning more about them and how to use them. You can do this with other uh, antenna analyzers or SWR meters. It's just that I work with Nano VNAs because I like them and I find them easy to use. So what we're doing is, is that we are actually sending a signal out of this channel zero. It's called an S11 signal. It's going to come out this wire and it's going to come all the way around and it's going to go into the transmitter side of our tuner. And it's going to go through the internals of the tuner, and then the signal will come out here, and it will go into my antenna, which is an NFED half-wave dipole out in the backyard, and it'll feed through here. Um, here we have a display of frequency, and this is a um, SWR plot. Uh, this is lower frequency this way. This is higher frequency that way. Um, and you can see that my antenna has multiple points where it's near resonant or matched. Uh, and that is because it's an infed half wave and that's how they're designed. But I did just want to quickly show that by making adjustments, and here we're making inductor adjust adjustments, uh, you can see how this will actually change the characteristics of my antenna and where it will be matched better to my radio. Um, and it's the same thing if I adjust or uh, manipulate the the capacitors, uh, the, the variable capacitors that we have in here. So you, you do this in order to find um, where you want to work best. Now, what I would recommend to somebody is, is that you would set up your antenna uh, before you go out uh, or maybe when you go out, and then you would use something like this Nano VNA or antenna analyzer 
to understand what settings on the front of this work best for you and your antenna in that situation. So that way you're not going out blind. When you just have an SWR meter that tells you you're one to one or two to one, it's a lot more difficult to tune your antenna. Here you can see based off your, your match point or your resonance point that your antenna needs to be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, and it's much, much easier to adjust when you have something like this visually, but also when you have an idea of where your antenna performs best on the settings on the front of the tuner, you can remember that. So you can get your course adjustments out in the field and then use this to find adjust. Um, just a recommendation. So let's go ahead now and take a look at this in the software. Okay, so I'm surprised this is working as well as it uh, is. So what we have here is a copy of Nano VNA Saver in the background, and we are doing a continuous sweep um, right here. You can see that on the 10 meter band, and you can see from our current settings that uh, we're mostly matched or mostly resonant here uh, down at the, uh, the lower end of the 10 meter band. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this uh, as a view from another camera. We're going to use this interface on our tuner to adjust that. To maybe we want to be better matched at the higher end of the band. So there's a couple of different things that we can do. Um, one of the things we always talk about is adjusting your inductance first. So we can go ahead and we can make that change. And you can see that that's, that's not the desired uh, the, uh, change that we want. But Let's just go ahead and click through here and make a diff couple settings. I'm actually going to turn the inductor the other direction. And uh, so here's where we started out. And then uh, here's where we go here. I'm going to leave the inductance at A. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to move these and see what happens. Um, so if I turn that way, what is happening is, is the antenna looks electrically longer than it is. So if I go this way... So now we're starting to get a better match towards the, the higher end of the band. Okay, and so here you can see how the settings are. And what you can see is, is that the dip has moved from the lower end of, the, of this band to the higher end of the band, giving us a little bit better match and a little bit better performance. You can do this on any band. I just happened to pick 10. And one of the things I want to show now is the Smith chart. We're not going to go too deep into that because Smith charts drive people crazy, but I do think it's something worth taking a look at. Okay, so here we are on the Smith chart, and what I wanted to point out is, is that when you have values along the blue line or your trace on the Smith chart, uh, if they are, are above what we'll call the equator, uh, for simplicity's sake, of the Smith chart, which is the middle line going across, then you have more inductance in your antenna, antenna system, uh, and that can be a result of your tuner. Uh, if they're below, they have more capacitance. Uh, so what we can do here is, is that we can adjust where our antenna is more or less resonant. So your antenna is actually resonant at points that are along that equator because that is where you are non-reactive. You have a purely resistive antenna. There is no inductive or capacitive reactance. Anyhow, I think that's gonna wrap up the video. I wanna say thanks for watching everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching. And thanks MFJ for sending this product out for my consideration.